Hello everybody, this is Craig Evans of Autism Hangout and thank you for tuning into this feature program series. Today we deal with moving out. And there's a lot of us with kids on the spectrum that are 16, 17, 18 years of age and we're starting to look for what independent life may look like for them. And if they're not independent, what other opportunities they have that will be available to them. With me today is Mr. Greg Cruz. Now Greg is the supervisor here in Dakota County, supervisor of social services. And on a daily basis, he's around a lot of what this housing entails. Dakota County here in Minnesota is one of the more progressive, and I'd like to think that what we're doing here, there are pockets around the United States that are also on this cutting edge sort of thing. So, Greg, welcome. It's awful nice to have you here today. Well, thanks for inviting me on your program. Okay, now let's talk a little bit more about your job capacity, your title, and what it is you do before we get into the specifics of housing. I supervise uh, case managers who uh, try to develop services for individuals, not only that have individuals or children with uh, an autism spectrum disorder, but also the traditional developmental disabilities such as Down syndrome, uh, intellectual disabilities, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when somebody comes to you, it's most likely a social worker? Uh, yes. Okay. And the social worker, if they're working with a family, are they asking a series of questions or do they already have something in their mind that they're using as an assessment for where this individual may, may live? Uh, they already have in their mind. The uh, social workers are, are well-trained, experienced individuals uh, with people with disabilities and can assess the level of cares that uh, an individual needs. Okay, and say for instance in Dakota County, uh, and let's, let's keep this to uh, people on the spectrum as much as we can. H how many facilities are available? Well, autism specific, there's really not very many. There's probably 10 or 15 at most. Well over 80% of our individuals uh, are children or less than 21. And so we haven't had the need over the years to really quite develop uh, large numbers of individuals or large number of facilities or sites or programs for the individuals with autism. So mm -hmm. it's a bit of just a coming phenomenon and yeah. um, we're, we're struggling like most states and counties and trying to uh, meet the needs that people have. Are most of them like private homes that will hold up to say 10 people, group homes? Why don't, why don't I sort of describe um, the range of services that are residential that we have? Very good. Um, as you're all aware, on the autism spectrum disorder, it's a large range of individuals with a wide variety of, of disabling conditions. Uh, from the individuals who are the most challenged, who might have an intellectual disability along with their autism, who can't communicate, uh, can't do self-care, who, who need really 24-hour uh, assistance, somebody near them throughout the day. Mm -hmm. To the far other end, who, an individual who is more on the Asperger's end of, of, of the scale, who has many, many uh, functions, can do quite well on many things, but needs just a little bit of assistance to uh, get by in life. Mm -hmm. And so the range of services we have encompasses that whole range. So if I start with the individuals with much more of a challenging um, uh, disability, uh, that's the group home situation. Okay. And the group homes are homes for no more than four individuals. So it's not large institutions at all. They're homes, uh, uh, single family dwelling type homes. They're usually run by uh, uh, for profit companies. Uh, some are not for profit, but most of them are for, for profit organizations. These are staffed uh, 24 hours a day uh, with shift staff and um, uh, frequently have an individual on at night and might have as many as three staff to the four clients throughout the day depending upon the challenges that the resident has. Mm -hmm. that's, that's one of the far end. Okay. The other end uh, is the individual who has many, many skills but needs some supports and they're, um, they would have their own apartment and individuals uh, could come in to support them on as few as a couple hours a week to as many as maybe 20, 30 hours a week. 
And so in between all of that, uh, there's probably some kind of a setting that fits uh, commensurate with the needs of the individual. Mm -hmm. um, Is the latter setting more like an apartment complex? Yes, it would be. Uh, they'd have just an independent apartment like anybody else would have an apartment. Mm -hmm. And a, a, a support staff would come in on a periodic basis, help them with managing their money, uh, help them with maybe cleaning their, their place, help them getting groceries, uh, any of the activities of life that uh, in order to maintain an apartment and be there, uh, that's, now, what they would, that's what they would help. These workers that come in, these are, are not county workers or state workers, these are individuals that would be hired then by the facility that's providing the housing? That's, well, they'd be provided by a provider organization. The housing in the apartments are they're just regular um, uh, market apartments. They're, you know, uh, okay. anybody can live in them. Okay. What sort of uh, standards are there for testing or qualifying these individuals? Is there anything in place at this point? Well, the companies are all, um, they hold a license from the state of Minnesota. Companies have a well, sort of a rigorous policy procedure that they have to submit to the state. Uh, there's a training program that they must submit in a year two, and there's uh, background checks. There's uh, so many hours of training before an individual works with uh, an individual with a disability. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, fairly well regulated. When you are looking across the United States for examples of progressive people that are doing innovative things in housing for uh, people beyond the child and adolescent stage, the adults, 21 to say 40. Are there any particular states or any particular counties that you find of interest that you're watching uh, in hopes of finding better things for Dakota County? Well, I think Pennsylvania is a, a state that you know, tends to have a, a little more pro progressive kinds of programs in, for individuals with autism. What do you see coming down the pike here for Dakota County? What what have we got? In, have we got some more progressive things in store that you're working on right now? Well, one of the that's one of the things we're we're real happy to report today is is that we're trying to figure out the housing arrangements for individuals who need more than just a few hours a week. We don't need somebody there 24 hours a day, uh, seven days a week. One of the things that we're working on is some apartment programs that are that we're renting uh, six to eight to ten apartments in a large apartment complex. There will be a uh, staff office located in the apartment. Mm -hmm. There will be a staff member there 24 hours a day. And then what's a little different in this is that we're trying to use a little bit more technology uh, for supports. And by using technology, what that means is that the um, resident will have the ability to um, call the staff member uh, on, a, on a cell phone or just hit a little button and contact the staff person. Mm -hmm. um, the person can be available then. They're within the building. They can get to them fairly quickly. Other pieces of technology, one of the worries that people have is what's is my son or daughter, are they in bed all day? Are they up all night? Yeah. Uh, what, what's, what's going on? And so in these uh, apartments, we're going to be using some technology, some sensors that would do things like a bed sensor that would, would uh, respond if somebody's in bed. Uh, sensors that uh, turn off the stove after a certain period of time. Greg, how can people find out more information about uh, Dakota County's setup for, for homes? If they're interested, uh, they could contact myself. Um, my uh, email okay. is greg.cruz, K-R-U-S-E, at co.dakota.mn.us. Well, thank you again, Greg, and hopefully we'll talk to you again soon. Okay. Thank you, Greg. And thank you, folks at Autism Hangout. I'll be back again soon with another feature program.